The common complaint about electric vehicles is that they cost too much. Not all are priced like luxury cars. A base Nissan Leaf MSRP is for around $29,000. There's a Volkswagen ID4 that stickers for under 39 grand. And then there's the Chevrolet Bolt EV that gets a substantial price drop for 2023, starting at less than 27,000 bucks. You're looking at the Bolt EUV that gets a slight uptick in the base price by around $1,500 that buys a slightly longer wheelbase and a cleaner looking C-pillar. Even so, it's still more affordable than the Nissan and V-Dub and easily beats their ranges. This particular car with the Redline package is fully loaded. It's the most expensive Bolt that you can buy and MSRPs for under $38,000, yes, that's with destination and before any tax credits. Plus, it's stuffed with creature comforts and technology, stuff that you won't find on cars costing $10,000 more. That includes a digital rear view mirror, heated and vented leather seats up front, uh, toasty cushions for your besties in back, and a Bose sound system that's unusually punchy considering the price and only seven speakers. Plus, there's Super Cruise, once exclusive to Cadillac. The Redline treatment, available on both the LT and this Premier model, means some crimson stitching, a different badge look, red stripes here, and here on black wheels. It cuts the paint color choices to three from seven, and that fashion statement is 495 bucks. I've done a full test on the Bolt EUV. I suggest checking that for more detail, including an extended look at Super Cruise. This video is the Cliff Notes. Bolt is strictly front wheel drive and frontless. The motor makes 200 horsepower and 266 pound feet of torque to move 3,700 pounds of automobile. The floor mounted liquid cool lithium ion pack is 65 kilowatt hours. This updated battery is not GM's newest Ultium and Bolt doesn't do vehicle to load transfer. On entry, the greeting is less of a tone, more of a gong. Both EV and EUV share this interior and the drive selector gets this arrangement now. It's easy to get used to. All bolts get a sport mode that adds some heft to the steering weight. It's not just a red line thing. There's also one pedal drive mode that remembers your preference at startup. Plus this to add even more recuperation drag. It's a clever setup. Redline is a trim package, so there isn't any additional power. I get it, General Motors is trying to keep the costs down. And really, zero to 60 in an easy seven seconds feels pretty good with this car. Remember, lots of low end torque. Bolt feels pretty spunky off the line. You know how it is, electric vehicles always feel faster than they are, and there's plenty of passing power here. One pedal driving is easy or back it off if you want the dynamics similar to gas powered cars we're all used to. For a lower priced vehicle, Bolt EUV is very quiet and that's great for listening to the Bose system. Redline having the sporty image, I kind of feel like there's a missed opportunity for an improved tire and suspension package to make it even sportier to drive. But still the Bolt's the Bolt is fun to drive. You chuck it hard into a corner and it's got that low center of gravity because of the heavy batteries in the floor. And one thing about this car, something that you'll notice, it's got an unusually supple ride quality. Even my wife noticed it soaked up bumps nicely and she's not a car person. The longer wheelbase probably makes a difference. Stickier rubber would be a hoot. It would also drop range and buyers are sensitive about that. Bolt EUV has slightly less of it than Bolt EV. This one's rated at 247 miles. It's been cold this week in the low 30s, so I'm definitely not going to be getting that range. Closer to 220. That's the way electric vehicles work, folks. And really, that's not bad for an affordable vehicle. 
It's not just range that's important. People that travel often will want a high max charging speed with a good charge curve. Compared to most EVs out there, Bolts is pretty pokey, around 55 kilowatts, so no matter what kind of terminal it's plugged into, that's the fastest it'll juice up. 10 to 80% will take just over an hour. Ionic 5 does that in around 20 minutes. But remember, that's at 350 kilowatt terminals, and those aren't all that popular. As always, temperature is a factor when charging. EVs are not for everyone, especially for those without access to easy charging. Slow charging speed at DC fast chargers like this is Bolt's Gilly's heel, no doubt about it. If you often take long road trips or you can't charge where you sleep, then this could be an issue. However, if you do charge at home, then it's not an issue because it just charges up overnight, just like any other EV. Know that GM throws in home charger installation or opt for a $500 EVgo credit. Because Bolt is more of an urban machine, available Super Cruise may not be worth the $2,200 since it's for divided highways only. But the standard ADAS systems that include adaptive cruise and lane keeping are quite decent. Both of the Bolt models have a new interior that's more conventional and doesn't look like white styrofoam anymore. Only a hard look, and in 4K, tells if this is real or fake stitching, and materials are soft to the touch. The look is definitely normal, addressing a common complaint that EVs always look like spaceships. The bird's eye camera system has some solid optional views. White seat panels are available, not so great when wearing new Levi's. It would be nice if this stitching matched the rest of the red stuff. The large glass roof is part of the $2,500 sun and sound package. The Navi system that comes with it is connected, meaning there's a data charge for full functionality. The 10 inch screen houses a user interface that's deceptively well done. It's helpful for getting to functional charging stations, but there are apps like Chargeway. And there's a standard Qi charger that pairs well with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, another thing that some expensive vehicles don't offer. There's lots of storage down low, a consolation to the lack of a frunk. Uh, plastics down here are kind of budget grade. There is some cost cutting in this vehicle. That's to be expected. It's the way the auto industry has always worked and always will. You don't get luxury car features and materials in a mainstream vehicle. Still, a Bolt loaded to the gills is trying pretty hard to muscle in on upscale vehicles. A shopper's Guide, the Sun and Sound, and Super Cruise packages are only available on the Premier EUV. Bolt EUV's advantage over Bolt EV, jeez, oh that's so confusing, is a back seat with three inches of extra legroom. I'm five foot nine and I have plenty of knee and legroom. The heated back seats have good thigh support. I would check headroom on the test drive, especially if passengers you like are on the tall side. Phones can be charged, no separate climate zone or adjustable vents, that's a sign of an affordable car, but the floor is flat, so footroom is great when squeezing three in, it's best for two adults. The security cover stashes in the car when hauling big things. There's no spare, about the only thing positive I can muster up here is that it frees up space. The dual voltage charge cord is standard. Choose between covered storage and max cargo room. There's 16.3 cubic feet, that's around five carry-on suitcases. It's an easy reach to drop the seat backs. That opens up 57 cubic feet, not bad for a smaller vehicle. And if you want a totally flat floor, it's a thing in the EUV. Let's move on to red light, green light. Green light. Bolt's new price makes it a truly affordable EV with good range. The EUV gets a sleeker look. It's amazing what extra length and a redone C-pillar can do. The improved cabin is stuffed with features and can be had with luxury touches and super cruise. The carpool gang will appreciate the extra leg room and comfortable seats. Yellow lights. EUV's design and extra back seat room means a bump in price and a small dip in range. It's zippy fun, but push it hard and enthusiasts will want more from the Redline model. There's extra room in back, but it's for legs and knees, not hips and heads. 
red lights. Road trippers will lament Bolt's slower DC fast charging speed. No spare tire is always a bummer. And after three years, Super Cruise will require owners to pay. Welcome to the future of subscription services. Bolt's image still suffers from the black eye of the battery recall, but kudos to GM for making things right for customers. The upgraded packs seem safe. Some might not be comfortable charging in an attached garage at night. And word is Chevy can't keep up with demand for the Bolt these days, especially because people are hoping to get the full $7,500 federal tax credit in early 2023. Bolt continues to be an excellent value when it comes to electric vehicles, which makes up for its slow DC fast charging rate. And that doesn't even matter if you're always charging at home. The only real miss I see is because this is the sporty red line version, it doesn't have an enhanced handling package, but that's just me. I've always wanted kind of an electric GTI. This could be it. The red line is simply about style. Both of the bolts are priced right, if you can get them at MSRP, and they lower the cost of driving, saving even more money. It's proof that there's a solid affordable EV that's dressed for success, right down to the bow tie. Uh, don't bother posting the usual misinformation about EVs running on coal-generated electricity or that the mining process for battery materials causes huge environmental damage. That's all been credibly debunked when compared to petroleum extraction and refinement, not exactly environmentally friendly. Come on, no car is benign to planet Earth. Research shows that EVs are better, though. And the batteries tend to last a long time. A GM engineer told me about tests on two bolts, one charged on level two and another exclusively DC fast charged. After 100,000 miles, the level two juiced car lost 3% of its capacity. The fast charged car lost 5%. And I'd love to get deep in the weeds about the tax credit, but it seems like it's changing monthly. So you're going to have to do your homework if that's important to you. This is the end. Before I go, let's talk charging etiquette because more and more EVs are being sold. Etiquette is going to be important going forward. For starters, if you're parking here, charge up, okay? I am shocked at how many times I see EVs parked at a station and they're not even plugged in. Come on, somebody may need to use the charger. Also, know your vehicle's charge speed and don't hog the fast terminal, all right? Sometimes there are 350 kilowatt stations. Leave those for the Porsche Taycans and EV6s, Ionic 5s that can take advantage of those. And finally, if you see one of these, that's a Chatamo plug and Nissan Leaf users need to use that. So if you have a choice, don't use this one. Use another charger first. There you go. Those are the basics. Remember, subscribe to this channel, click notifications, follow me on social media, and if you have a question, leave it in the comments. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.